Pat Parsons is on a mission to find a name. He's asked me to identify him. It's the best way I can explain it. Uh, that photograph hung in the Bank of New Zealand in Hastings in the 1980s, and it just said, a chief of Heratonga. No identity at all. And I got a copy taken of it. Part of the Samuel Carnell collection, the tipuna is unidentified, and that has caught Pat's interest. If there's one thing, I reckon I'm not too bad at researching because I walk the extra mile until I find what I want. And then, and then I'm happy and go on to something rather else. Pat Parsons has been likened to Don Stafford, a Pākehā who has dedicated his life to Māori whakapapa and history. Solving a mystery of an unidentified tipuna is right up Pat's alley. It's a job for me to get that identity done and it will happen. I can say that with confidence because it's happened before and before. Pat Parsons is a recognised authority in Māori history. The 80-year-old specialises in Ngāti Kahanganu and surrounding iwi. He knows whakapapa like a few do. I hardly knew it was happening, but I asked a lot of questions and I, and I wasn't worried about arranging to meet someone who might be able to help me on the way. The end result of all this in terms of whakapapa books is I was allowed by those old people to copy, well, I've got 43 of them at home, uh, and, and they cover various areas of Hawke's Bay principally. Pat was brought up by his grandparents who were often in the company of Māori, and his grandfather's friend, Bob Cottrell, was his first mentor. And I said to him, Bob, I, I've always been puzzled about something. I said, how come our farm is Pākehā land and through the fence is all native land. And he said to me, come down uh, one Saturday afternoon, and he said, we'll get my grandfather's trunk out and we'll see what it says. Uh, and so that's what happened. Uh, and he became like a, a university tutor for one. What is it about Māori Whakapapa that has grabbed you so much? Yeah, you've got to look deeper into me. Um, I'm a restless man. Uh, I lose interest in things easily if they don't hold my interest. Whakapapa always had me beat. I never knew at all. Uh, I, I, I became aware that there were more books out there, more people to talk to, and, and it was a thirst for knowledge. Why it happened, to, it could have been something quite different, like the stars or something or other, but Whakapapa it was. Pat would spend hours and hours poring over Māori Land Court minute books, piecing together as much as he could find. I would ring old people, you know, target ones that, uh, uh, you know, might be able to help me. Well, one day down at Bob Cottrell's, he said to me, there's another man you should be talking to. And I said, Who was, who's that? And he said, Jimmy Mapu. He said, he's older than I am, and he said, he's well educated, and uh, so I said, could you arrange it? And, and Bob did. So during the lifetimes of those two men, I had individual access to them. I got on well with them. Uh, uh, I, I fed off their knowledge. And then it kept going. Whakapapa books and rare historical collections would find their way to him. Almost to the very last one, I was offered them. Uh, to, to read or to get copied. How has that been, being a Pākehā in this very Māori space? Most of the detractors I never ever face. I hear about it after the event when someone, someone says they've put someone down or um, uh, would you rather that this work wasn't being done at all? You know, and, and meaning, well, if you're so concerned about it, why aren't you the one who's doing whakapapa? You know, we don't take the time out to learn from him what we can. It's going to be lost. Most marae around here have invited me in to do whakapapa seminars focusing on their hapu um, whakapapa so that all sitting at the same venue at the same time uh, can see the links between them and the other whānau who are, who are present at the same time. 
You want something? Thank you. I'm going to give you something. Oh, you're going to give something? Yes. Mm. What would you like? It would be easier for me to name for you the Marae who haven't invited me in rather than the ones who have. One of the beauty of this, he doesn't, his, his kind of payment is the koha. It's the knowledge that he gives. That's his, you know how some people they want, oh, about $40 an hour, $50 an hour. He's not like that. And I think that the mana of this, the mana of this papa and the way you are about this is strengthened because of that desire, inner, inner, inner desire for him just to want to know and share. Have you ever had times of self-reflection or looking at yourself going, why me? Self-doubt. Yes, 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 of course I have. But I've actually asked directly various kuia, komatoa, and, and I've said to them, you know, sometimes I, I think um, I'm, the, I'm the wrong person to be in this position. And the answer from almost the whole lot was, if you're doing the work, you know, you, you, you're walking, walking the, the trail, as it were, you're the right person to be doing it. You literally have walked the trails. Correct. I know the par sites of this province, I reckon, better than any other living person. Why? because I bothered to walk them. Pat has collected more than 3,000 photographs of tipuna and was instrumental in pulling together the black papers that are now housed at the EIT Research Centre. With his knowledge of whakapapa and wahi tapu, has come an understanding of te ao Māori. Obviously in its, in its day, this was underwater, uh, not desperately deep. But I know the, the, the um, Takatimu came here and anchored. I have a very clear idea of what I should respect in the Māori world, and I always try to make sure I do that. You do pick up a lot, uh, and also the company I mix with in the Māori world, they're very good at steering me and, and just, you know, pointing me, pointing out things that one does and one doesn't. And so, although I don't speak the reo to any degree, uh, I do have quite a clear understanding of tikanga and, uh, and, and spiritual, spirituality generally. To the degree that I make that one of my fields of study, there are things such as genuine tohunga. I know because I've experienced them. Have you had any regrets spending most of your adult life immersed in Māori culture. I think we all, when we get to the later stages of our lives, we do sit down occasionally and think, now, if I had my time over again, uh, is, this, is, is this the pathway I would have wanted to follow? And, and you, you probably have communicated to you too, anything else I might have wished to do in my life, this has been a very good substitute. So you couldn't really have had the distraction of marriage and children? No, I had to earn, I'd have had to have earned a living, <laughs> keep the kids going sort of thing, all of those things. So I think we all make sacrifices one way or another in our lives. And, and I don't think, we might have brief regrets along the way when something crops up, but uh, in terms of the main course of your life, uh, if you can say at the end, look, I, I reckon I've done pretty well with what, with what I was born with, you know. I've, I've developed the talents, and, and the talents find you, don't they? If you've got a tucked away talent in you, <clears throat> sooner or later, somewhere along the way, it'll surface. Uh, well, that's been my experience anyway. Mm -hmm.